OK, so we're going to evaluate this definite integral. And just at a glance, because we're integrating between 0 and pi over 2, and because we've got a trig function in here, we've got tan, it looks like we could potentially take advantage of some symmetry of the tan function. So what do we mean by this? Well, for example, we could use the fact that tan is pi periodic. So tan theta plus pi is always just going to be equivalent to tan of theta. But if we were to try and use this to use some clever substitution, it doesn't seem like this would particularly help with this integral. We could try something else, like maybe the fact that tan of minus theta is equivalent to the negative of tan theta. But again, we would end up, if we used a substitution, integrating over some negative values, which doesn't seem particularly helpful here. Another fact that we could take advantage of is the fact that tan of pi minus theta is actually equivalent to negative tan of theta. But once again, if we were to try and use some substitution, this would take us outside of our range that we're interested in. But a similar substitution that would keep us within this range between 0 and pi over 2 would be considering what happens with tan of pi over 2 minus theta like this. And this is actually equivalent to cot theta. And we'll just spend a moment deriving this. It's not particularly complicated. It's just the fact that tan of pi over 2 minus theta, if we write this as sine pi over 2 minus theta divided by cos pi over 2 minus theta like this, then we can use the fact that sine pi over 2 minus theta is just equivalent to cos theta, and cos pi over 2 minus theta is always equivalent to sine theta. So then we've got cos theta divided by sine theta. You see this is equivalent to cot theta. So we could have a go using this and see if we can form a substitution that might help. And the substitution that comes to mind now is actually, if we've got a tan x here, let's imagine we were to replace x by pi over 2 minus u. Or equivalently, if we rearrange this, u is equal to pi over 2 minus x. So first of all, we would get the fact that dx, when we change, instead of integrating with respect to x, we'd integrate with respect to u, our dx would just be equivalent to negative du. And this is particularly useful because you can see here tan x would be equivalent to tan of pi over 2 minus u. So we would take our tan x, this would be the same as tan pi over 2 minus u. But then using this identity, tan pi over 2 minus theta is cot theta, so tan pi over 2 minus u is going to be equivalent to cot u, like this. So let's see what this does for our integral now when we apply this substitution with u is pi over 2 minus x. But first of all, when x is 0, we would have u is pi over 2 minus 0, so u would be pi over 2. Then when x is pi over 2, u is pi over 2 minus pi over 2, we get 0 as our upper bound there. Then in our integral, we've got 1 over 1 plus tan x to the power of 8. And we've set this up so that tan x is equivalent to cot u. So let's just turn this into 1 over 1 plus cot u raised to the power of 8, like this. And then dx is equivalent to negative du. So when we change from dx to du, we just introduce a negative sign. But actually, because we're integrating from pi over 2 up to u, we can get rid of this negative sign now just by changing the order of integration like this. So now we integrate from 0 up to pi over 2, and our original integral is equivalent then to the integral of 1 over 1 plus cot to the power of 8 u integrated with respect to u. And now that we've got two different expressions for our original integral, we'll see how these two are related to each other. And this becomes clear if we just take each of our fractions and we split tan up into sine divided by cos, and we split cot up into cos divided by sine. So for our first integrand, we've got 1 over 1 plus tan to the 8x, which we'll write as 1 over 1 plus sine to the 8x over cos to the 8x. Then just to get rid of this fraction in the denominator, we'll multiply on our numerator and denominator by cos to the 8x. So we have cos to the 8x now divided by cos to the 8x plus sine to the 8x. And if we do the same thing for our 1 over 1 plus cot to the 8 of u, we have 1 over 1 plus it's cos to the 8 u divided by sine to the 8 u. So you see this is very similar, we've just got a different letter for our variable here. We multiply by sine to the 8 u on the top and bottom of our fraction, 
which gives us sine to the 8u over sine to the 8u plus cos to the 8 of u, just like this. You can see these are actually very similar. We've essentially got the same denominator, just with a different variable. So if we were to make the variables the same, there's no reason we couldn't change both of these u's into x's and add them together. You'll see we'll get sine to the 8 of x plus cos to the 8 of x over a common denominator, which should give us some nice cancellation. So if we call our original integral, let's just call this capital I. So 2 times capital I will write as the integral to pi over 2 from 0 of 1 over 1 plus tan to the 8 of x dx. And this is our original integral, so two lots of this. We'll rewrite the second copy now using x instead of u, just 1 over 1 plus cot to the 8 of x integrated with respect to x. So now this is helpful because we can combine these two integrals together and use these identities that we've got here. So we're going to now have the integral between 0 and pi over 2 of, first of all, our 1 over 1 plus tan to the 8x is cos to the 8x over cos to the 8x plus sine to the 8x. And we're going to have the same denominator when we do the same thing for our second part of the integral. So 1 over 1 plus cot to the 8x. Here, where we just replace our u's by x's, we get sine to the 8x. And this is divided by sine to the 8x plus cos to the 8x. We get the same denominator there. All of this integrated with respect to x. And you can see at this point, this fraction completely disappears and is just equal to 1. So we're just integrating 1 between 0 and pi over 2. So then we see that 2 times our original integral is equal to pi over 2. Then we can conclude that our original integral, this capital I, is the integral between 0 and pi over 2 of 1 over 1 plus tan to the power of 8x integrated with respect to x. So 2 times the integral was pi over 2, so the original integral is going to be pi over 4. And what's really interesting about this example is that actually the fact that it's raised to a power of 8 is completely irrelevant to the solution. So we could have raised this to a power of any real number, even 0, it would still work. And we would still get pi over 4 as our solution.